Spotify did not come up with the idea for online music on demand streaming. They just nailed the experience and executed it well. But in doing so, Spotify became a game changer for the entire music industry for small creators to big stars. Today, they have the power to decide who makes it in the music industry and their future. Looking into the incredible past, present and possible future of the company, we can also see a dark side, filled with greed, controversies, exploitations and fight for survival. This is the story of Spotify. Spotify was founded in 2006 by Daniel Ek and Martin Lawrenson. Both Ek and Lawrenson previously founded and worked on successful businesses before Spotify. In 2005, Lawrenson sold his stock options in the digital marketing company he co-founded, Trade Doubler, for $70 million. In March 2006, Trade Doubler bought Advertigo, an advertising service created by Daniel Ek, for $1.25 million. They soon became friends, finding that they had common experiences of depression because of unexpected wealth and a lack of purpose after retiring from their earlier businesses. As Daniel and Martin discussed a lot of ideas back and forth for their next project and spent a lot of time hanging out, they realized how difficult it was to get music content, despite the technology having been around since 2000. They got stuck on the idea of Spotify. In early 2000, the music industry was quite different compared to now. CDs were the most common digital medium and personal computers just started to become common in every household. Napster started the digital music revolution and was extremely popular in early 2000 with its peer-to-peer file-sharing service allowing people to share music files for free. Obviously, this was not legal and record companies sued Napster. Napster ceased operations in 2001 after losing a wave of lawsuits and filed for bankruptcy in June 2002. Daniel Ek first had the idea for Spotify in 2002 when other similar legal sites like LimeWire, Kazaa and Torrent sites like Pirate Bay took over Napster's place. Apple iTunes Store was launched in 2003 as one of the first attempts to provide digital music downloads legally, allowing consumers to purchase and download each song for a small fee. iTunes and internet radio services like Pandora further pushed the growth of digital music consumption. Still in 2006, it was cumbersome to get music content. Popular internet-based options were to pay for each music and services like Apple iTunes or listen to digital radio services or pirate it. Piracy was haunting the music industry and the industry was losing billions due to it. Daniel realized that you can never legislate away from piracy. Laws can help. But the only way to solve the problem was to create a service that was better than piracy and at the same time compensates the music industry. But in order to launch a successful music streaming service, they need access and rights to popular music content and to pitch the service to record labels, they needed a working prototype. It is reported that they used thousands of pirated MP3 files from sites like Pirate Bay for the initial development of the service. They were building a service in which creators get paid, but the user's experience doesn't suffer. User experience was one of the key focus areas, and for that, they utilized the existing peer-to-peer -peer technology used in Napster and other torrent sites. When you stream a song on your desktop, Spotify stores an encrypted version of the song on your hard drive so that replaying will not end up in re-downloading the song again. Also, when a song is played for the first time, instead of downloading a complete file just from its own server, Spotify searches for copies of the song wherever it can find them, including the devices of other Spotify users. This greatly contributed to making the overall user experience snappier. The company removed its peer-to-peer -peer network later in 2014, once it had enough servers spread around the world. Services like Napster were hugely popular but illegal. On the other end services like Apple's iTunes, which sold songs individually for as much as $2 per track, were legal but expensive. Spotify's approach was to identify and carve out a niche between these two extremes in the music market. Daniel and Martin wanted Spotify to create a seamless listening experience for the users to make them feel as though they had every single song ever recorded right on their hard drives. The company built a working prototype in just a few months and went to closed beta in less than a year. To find its initial beta users, they invited influential music bloggers in Sweden to try the new product. Spotify's beta testers were struck by just how good the product was and they helped to spread the word about the exciting new music app. Spotify now had a better version of Napster and now needed to move away from piracy to become a legal business before its official launch. And for that, they needed to make licensing deals with record labels. The music industry was in a difficult position at this point. The global music industry revenues were declining steadily, 
falling from $25.2 billion in 1999 to $19.4 billion in 2006, and showed no sign of slowing down. The music companies had huge profit margins selling physical products like CDs. But as everything became more and more digital, sales started to go down as well as the profit margins. This was further boosted by piracy as obtaining pirated digital music files became much easier and the cheapest option. Spotify's timing was perfect, and they had an impressive product. Still, everything did not go as easily as they planned. Years of uncontrolled piracy had left record labels paranoid about giving up rights especially to a free ad-based service. Without that first deal with the labels, Spotify wouldn't have survived. It took Daniel and Martin two years and many compromises to make licensing deals with record companies. Record companies, including the big three, Universal, Sony and Warner Music Group, agreed to give licenses just to the Swedish market initially as an experiment and later to other major European markets. Spotify had to offer an 18% cumulative stake in Spotify to the major record labels for less than 14,000 US dollars to sweeten the deals. Apart from the equity stakes, these deals are believed to have some other terrible terms as well, including paying upfront fees to other pro rata payments and controls. The record labels themselves had little to lose by backing Spotify, and at the same time, they needed to try something different to reach young music fans. Spotify's streaming service was launched on October 7, 2008, with a freemium model, a free plan with ads, and a £10 per month premium plan without ads and extra features. Due to high demand, they had to restrict the free plan sign-up by making it invite-only initially. Spotify became popular in more European markets and added more music distributors, independent artists and investors. By March 2009, Spotify had 1 million total subscribers and by the end of the year, Spotify was available on both Apple and Android mobile platforms and continued to grow as it provided an alternative to both legal and illegal downloading of music. Sean Parker, the co-founder of the infamous file-sharing site Napster and the president of Facebook, was impressed with Spotify, especially with its user interface and its social sharing functionality that allowed users to create and share playlists of songs with friends. Even though it was not yet available in the US, he became the first US investor in Spotify and introduced the product to Mark Zuckerberg. This created a huge hype for Spotify even before it was launched in the US. In April 2010, Spotify launched Spotify Music Profile, which enabled its users to publish their music profiles on the web and connect to Facebook, along with other social features. Spotify reached 1 million paying subscribers by early 2011 and was valued at $1 billion. After years of waiting, Spotify signed U.S. licensing deals and launched in the U.S. on March 2011. They kept on adding new features, partners and artists and by the end of 2012, Spotify had 20 million total subscribers including 5 million paid subscribers. Spotify went public on the New York Stock Exchange in 2018 via direct listing and today it is the largest music streaming service provider with over 456 million monthly active users and 195 million paid subscribers. There always has been concerns about Spotify's value to artists. It started with the news circulated in 2009 that Lady Gaga's hit song Poker Face has been streamed 1 million times on Spotify, for which she received a royalty check for just $167. Traditional physical or digital download sales pay artists a fixed price per song or album sold. As a streaming service, Spotify pays royalties based on the number of artist streams as a proportion of the total songs streamed. One stream is counted when someone listens for 30 seconds or more of a song. Spotify distributes approximately 70% of its total revenue to rights holders, which are often record labels, who then pay artists based on individual agreements. Spotify pays artists between 0.3 to 0.5 cent per stream on average, and the total payment could vary depending on agreements with licensors. In 2021, Spotify paid out more than $7 billion to music rights holders. But out of the total artists on the platform, only 16,500 artists earn more than $50,000 from Spotify, and only 52,600 artists earn more than $10,000. While Spotify has argued that it provides a valuable service to artists by promoting their music and helping them reach a wider audience, some artists have criticized and even left the platform for not paying them enough. The most notable such incident is when Taylor Swift pulled all of her music from Spotify in 2014. She was one of the first to speak out publicly and complained about the low payouts for artists. After a certain time, 
Everyone who left the platform seemed to be coming back as it became clear that Spotify is essentially the place that you have to be on in the music industry. With the tremendous success and the power of having the largest user base among the music streaming services, Spotify might be able to get better deals with record labels. But increased competition from other services and the fact that the majority of the music library is controlled by just three record labels makes this a really complicated space. Spotify has never reported an annual profit in its decade-long history. This has raised further questions whether their business model even work. Spotify is working on multiple features that could bring in higher revenue, attract more users as well as more independent artists to the platform and reduce dependence on record labels. They created the Discovery Mode, where an artist agrees to forfeit a percentage of their streaming income in exchange for Spotify algorithmically promoting that artist's music to more users. This will create a pay-for-play situation that will over time benefit nobody but the platform. Artists will receive even lesser royalties. Listeners will be plagued by promoted tracks that may not match their tastes. Artists would ultimately need to compete with one another for streams from their audiences and in a possible future where everybody is opting to pay to get their music promoted, the algorithm will be unable to prioritize easily, possibly rendering the whole scheme redundant. Spotify Playlist feature has been one of the core factors which attracted and tied users to the platform. With this, Spotify has also changed the way people discover and listen to music. It is very common for people to be exposed to different songs through playlists. People don't listen to albums or songs in order anymore. This gives Spotify more power than record labels over the modern music industry. With these playlists, Spotify can easily boost an artist's reach overnight by simply adding a song to the playlist, or the opposite by just dropping it. Spotify has been focusing much more on personalized music experience to differentiate itself from competitors and get more leverage over the record labels. They are now investing in artificial intelligence systems which get to know each individual user and their music likes and dislikes, creating personalized playlists for your every mood, vibe, or musical preference. Through personalized playlists like Discover Weekly, Spotify can even move towards songs that are less expensive to license and away from music owned by the major labels thus keeping a higher percentage of revenue share. There was a controversy in 2017 that some playlists on Spotify are full of unknown artists with no public profile and few songs, but millions of streams, all as a result of their position on the service. Even though Spotify denied these claims about adding fake artists, they are moving ahead with AI-generated songs and features. Spotify is even working on an AI tool that allows users to create new songs on their own or by modifying existing songs. They have also patented a technology that predicts which relatively unknown artists on the platform are likely to break in the near future, and has reportedly been working on a new feature that will create personalized workout playlists based on users' health data. Daniel Ek and Martin Lawrenson never worked in the music industry before founding Spotify in 2006. They both found success in advertising technology before Spotify. While privacy concerns are generally aimed at Facebook, Google, Apple and Microsoft, Spotify has ambitions to rival these advertising powerhouses. Each moment millions of people use Spotify to listen to music, which can be an incredibly intimate experience. What we listen to often says a lot about our emotions and other aspects of our life. Spotify's free plan, which is used by more than 250 million people is based on advertisement and is a major revenue area for the company. Maximizing profit from advertisements is a priority growth plan for Spotify. Spotify uses your listening history to determine what music it will recommend next to you. But the data Spotify collects goes beyond the simple recommendation to predicting your emotion and even manipulating it, or that advertisers can use to target specific products to you. In 2018, Spotify filed a patent involving speech recognition that would essentially allow it to make suggestions based on your emotional state, gender, age, social setting, or even accent. Spotify is investing heavily in original content like Netflix in order to reduce its dependence on licensing deals and increase its net revenue. Spotify has been one of the most aggressive investors in the podcasting market recently. The company is betting on the podcast market and has already invested over $1 billion in acquiring multiple podcasting companies, including Gimlet Media, Anchor, Parcast and The Ringer and content deals with Barack and Michelle Obama, DC Comics, Kim Kardashian, and Joe Rogan. Advertisers are estimated to pay between $18 and $50 per 1,000 podcast listeners. Spotify entered the podcast advertisement market with the accusation of the advertising technology company Megaphone. 
their push with original content has also moved to video clips, especially with podcast episode recordings and will be a future competitor to YouTube. Spotify has been plagued by fake listeners and streaming farms who have been stealing advertisers' money without them even realizing it. Streaming farms are created to specifically take advantage of streaming platforms like Spotify, where the number of listens of a song is artificially inflated by continuously listening to one's own songs over and over again. Money can be earned for every stream just like every artist does on Spotify. One of the biggest stream farm frauds that have been identified took place in 2017, which generated an estimated $1 million in fraudulent payouts. Spotify has done little to nothing to control this and with very few detection methods in place, fake listening on Spotify has become a big market and could be costing artists over $300 million a year. Apart from all these, Spotify has created other controversies due to their content policies banning music and podcasts, privacy policy updates, lawsuits, a few security breaches and other criticisms. The most recent ones were when Daniel Ek donated 100 million euros into a European defense AI company Helsing, and criticism from anti-misinformation groups when conspiracy theorist Alex Jones appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast, which lead to the removal of multiple episodes of the podcast among other things. Even with increased competition from big companies, the influence Spotify has on the industry is unparalleled. Spotify has faced some challenges and criticisms over the years. While Spotify has argued that it provides a valuable service to artists by promoting their music and helping them reach a wider audience, some artists have criticized the platform for not paying them enough. Another criticism of Spotify is its business model, which some critics have argued is not sustainable in the long term, raising questions about whether Spotify can generate enough revenue to support its operations. Adding the complicated relationship with record labels, Spotify is in pursuit of ways to generate revenue and reduce operational costs. This has also turned Spotify to be a major player in AI and advertisement industries. Despite these challenges, it is clear that Spotify has made a significant impact on the music industry, and it will continue to play a key role in the future.